The sauna is a popular tool that lots of people like to use to improve their health generally or maybe to improve their recovery uh, for their training. Or maybe they just like to relax and they like the kind of spa environment. Whenever I get the chance, I always love getting a sauna session in. Uh, it's very enjoyable. I like the feeling and I like how it makes me feel afterwards kind of very clean. But does the sauna actually live up to the hype that a lot of uh, health influencers give to it? Is it really worth using to enhance your health and your performance? In this video, I'm going to talk through the health effects and the mechanisms of using the sauna and then see what some of the best ways to use the sauna are for a few different goals like general health and uh, even fertility because that is something that people are concerned about when it comes to using the sauna. I won't spend too long explaining exactly how the sauna works but you do need a bit of background. The most common type of sauna is the Finnish sauna or the dry sauna and in this sauna the air is heated to high temperatures like 80 to 100 degrees celsius and the humidity is kept low low like 10 to 20 percent so it's a dry sauna and you can splash water on the stones to increase the humidity for a while but this is a dry sauna generally you don't spend that long in a dry sauna maybe just 5 to 20 minutes or so and this is the type of sauna that most of the studies have been done on it increases your heart rate your blood flow and it makes you sweat obviously then there's the infrared sauna which uses thermal radiation to heat the body directly rather than heating the air around your body the temperatures in an infrared sauna are lower more like 45 to 60 degrees celsius and the infrared radiation penetrates the skin and causes sweating and increased heart rate even at these lower temperatures you can spend a little bit longer in an infrared sauna and it's a bit more accessible uh, like easier to set up at home and more convenient there are definitely still lots of benefits but potentially a bit milder because it's not quite as extreme as the finished sauna uh, but we're not really sure about that and there's not been as much research on infrared saunas and lastly there is the steam room so this is a room with very high humidity like like about 100% and lower heat like 40 to 50 degrees and the humidity prevents your sweat from evaporating so the sweat stays on your skin and your body can't cool itself down like it usually does through sweating so you heat up pretty quickly so the heating effect of a steam room is similar to other kinds of sauna and in this uh, steam room you also get some respiratory benefits as well like it will clear out your sinuses and your airways and it hydrates your skin I know that when I go in a sauna with my friends who have deviated septums or the nose problems they usually get some kind of relief from using the steam room and they like staying in there more than the dry sauna for that reason generally you stay in the steam room for less time uh, because it is quite easy to overheat in there and you do have more of a risk of bacteria and fungi growing in this environment which is very warm and moist so it has to be taken care of really carefully so the three kinds of sauna are different but their effect on the body is pretty similar they all increase skin temperature and core temperature and the heart rate increases and blood flow increases to try and cool you down and these effects on the body kind of mimic exercise right the increased temperature the increased heart rate and blood flow so you'd get some similar benefits to exercise especially in the cardiovascular system it's definitely not a complete replacement for exercise though of course there are loads of different mechanisms going on at the physiological level in exercise but for people who have heart problems or older people or people who are just more likely to stick to using the sauna rather than regular exercise this can be a good thing for for them to use. Now what you're probably interested in is what sauna can do for your health and your performance and maybe what the mechanisms are. Firstly using the sauna is a kind of heat stress and this activates the heat shock proteins in your body and these are proteins that repair other proteins that have been damaged or misfolded and this is good because you want your proteins to be in good shape and everything working properly. You don't want a bunch of misfolded and damaged proteins in your body that can cause a lot of problems and sauna can kind of repair the these proteins for you. There are a couple of benefits that have been directly linked to these heat shock proteins like protecting against neurodegenerative disorders like Alzheimer's in animal studies and people who have a more stable version of the HSP70 gene, that's a gene for one of the heat shock proteins, these people live about a year longer on average than people who don't have this stable version. So there is a small difference and it is only correlational data so take that with a grain of salt but there might be something there. And heat shock proteins also seem to protect and regenerate skeletal muscle which makes them potentially useful in muscle wasting disorders and maybe even of interest to athletes like most of the guys watching my videos. So these heat shock proteins are pretty good for us. The main benefit though of using the sauna really seems to be the effect on the cardiovascular system which makes sense because this cardiovascular system is pretty important in the body's response to heat stress. In the sauna your heart rate goes up, your blood flow increases, your blood pressure decreases. So it's somewhat similar to 
exercise in terms of the cardiovascular effects. And consistent sauna use has been shown pretty reliably to improve measures of cardiovascular health. There are lots of quality studies and meta-analyses on the cardiovascular benefits of using the sauna, like lowering the heart size in the case of cardiac hypertrophy, increasing the percentage of blood that's pumped from the left ventricle with each heartbeat so the heart is basically more efficient, lowering the risk of sudden cardiac death and loads of other cardiac related deaths, it lowers blood pressure in most studies, it reduces the severity of heart disease and even neurovascular diseases like some dementias and stroke are decreased when you use the sauna regularly like four times a week. So this is pretty good stuff. And there also seem to be some benefits for athletes. This evidence is less strong compared to the cardiovascular stuff but it's still fairly promising. You can get improved endurance performance. So in distance runners in one study, run time to exhaustion was increased by about 32% in the three weeks of using the sauna and this was highly correlated with increases in blood volume and plasma volume so the effects on the blood may have been driving these endurance benefits potentially. In another study basketball players did a hard workout of strength and plyometrics exercises and then they did either 20 minutes of sauna or nothing and the next day they did a performance test of 20 meter sprints, counter movement jump and isometric leg press strength and the sauna guys had a smaller decrease in jump height so they had recovered some of their explosiveness more quickly. Of course when you do a hard workout uh, the next day your performance is going to be decreased because you have fatigued yourself, your body is not quite ready um, to perform yet. So a smaller decrease in performance means that the sauna guys recovered a little bit better than the guys who just did nothing. They also had less severe muscle soreness and they felt better recovered subjectively. But I did find another study that kind of contradicted this one finding that rate of force development was impaired for 24 hours after exercise and sauna combined. So there are some mixed results for like the recovery side of things. Another study found that three weeks of using the sauna at 100 degrees increased hamstring flexibility and work capacity and even increased VO2 max which is pretty crazy. If you're into combat sports or any other sport that has weight classes you probably know that the sauna is often used by athletes who need to cut weight before a weigh-in for a competition so that they can weigh in uh, under their weight class category right and then put on as much size as they can before the actual competition after the weigh-in. So use the sauna to sweat a lot and that fluid loss decreases your body weight so that's how they cut weight. So for athletes there does seem to be some benefit to using the sauna. Don't overdo it of course but maybe a few times a week after your sessions especially if you have a rest day or an easy day the following day I think that could be a good situation to use it. There are also some effects of the sauna on hormones and the one that most people have probably heard of is that sauna increases growth hormone. In some studies up to 16 times higher growth hormone compared to baseline. It does go back down to normal pretty quickly though in most cases. Growth hormone like I've said in my growth hormone video could be thought of as a kind of stress hormone helping the body to protect itself like preserve muscle and improve metabolism in stressful situations like um, intense exercise or fasting or in this case heat stress. Another hormone is cortisol and cortisol is increased short term if you're not used to using the sauna but uh, when you get used to using the sauna repeatedly over time uh, using the sauna actually lowers your baseline cortisol. Prolactin is another hormone that increases when you use the sauna and that's not really great. We don't really want prolactin to be high so again another reason not to completely overuse the sauna and most studies find no change in thyroid hormones or other sex hormones like testosterone. Another interesting use of the sauna is to excrete toxins from the body through the sweat. Now before you tune out because I'm talking about detox and stuff sweating is a very minor form of detoxification compared to the liver or the kidneys but we can detect things like heavy metals and insecticides in sweat which suggests they are being removed from the body via sweat. Sauna and exercise are two ways to enhance this sweat based excretion. Exercise actually does seem to be better at removing heavy metals compared to the sauna but potentially doing exercise and then sweating in the sauna is even better for removing toxins from your body through the sweat. Just remember to wipe yourself off and rinse yourself off after the sauna otherwise that stuff will just stay on your skin. And by the way if you're interested in detoxing from microplastics and heavy metals and all of the modern chemicals that we're exposed to I made a full microplastics detox guide that breaks down exactly how to do that. No coffee enemas or juice cleanses 
or whatever people are promoting these days. Just sensible strategies working with the body's existing detox systems like the liver, the gut and the skin, just making sure those are all working as they should and not being held back by anything and uh, doing what you can to kind of enhance those. That will be linked in the description if you're on your skin. And lastly, you may have heard that using the sauna decreases fertility, at least in men. Sperm production is heat sensitive. Anything that raises the temperature of your testicles can impair sperm production. The testicles are kept about two to three degrees colder than the rest of the body and that's why they are outside the body because you don't want them overheating. And there are actually some studies showing that sauna use can decrease sperm number and quality. Although this effect is fully reversible by six months after stopping sauna use so you don't need to worry about this being a permanent thing. But if you are trying for a baby it's probably best to stop using the sauna until your wife is pregnant. Some people have suggested that you can kind of offset this by icing your balls like holding an ice pack or a cold towel on your groin while you're in the sauna so that is an option you might get some funny looks but if you really want to protect your swimmers then that is one strategy you can use so on the whole the sauna sounds pretty good but what do we need to be careful of there's always a downside dehydration is an obvious risk you are sweating a lot of fluid and electrolytes so you need to replace that by drinking water especially with electrolytes in it sauna can lower your blood pressure so if you have low blood pressure already you will want to be careful and if you've had a heart attack recently you should definitely check with your doctor before using a sauna some general precautions to take regarding the sauna are to avoid alcohol before and during the sauna don't spend too long in there like no longer than 20 minutes or so at a time drink plenty of water and don't use the sauna if you're ill now let's talk some guidelines for using the sauna like what temperature you should use and how long you should stay in there if you just want to use a sauna for general health like most people are going to then two or three sauna sessions a week is a good amount about 15 minutes each session will be good enough and you want it as hot as comfortably possible somewhere between 80 to 100 degrees celsius for a dry sauna 50 to 60 degrees celsius for an infrared sauna and about 45 degrees for a steam room in terms of what time of day you do it after a workout is a pretty good time but generally just the most convenient time for you it doesn't really matter hugely and you can use the sauna more frequently if you want to really maximize the benefits like four to seven times a week and if you want to protect your fertility while using the sauna you can use it less often like one or two times a week at most ideally not at all keep the sessions shorter like 10 to 15 minutes and use lower temperatures like 70 to 80 degrees celsius and remember if you're trying to conceive right now it is best to not use the sauna at all or at least use an ice pack on your groin thank you for watching i really hope you enjoyed this video and you found it useful let me know what your sauna strategies are whether you use it regularly uh, i usually just use it if i'm like traveling and i'm in a hotel where there's a sauna because i don't have one near me i would like to get a sauna for my house in the future though that would be very cool like most things you don't want to overuse this but i think it can be a really good tool for your health especially your cardiovascular health and it just feels great all right thank you for watching i'll see you in the next video